Okay. Yeah, I think I'll take it from here. So it's probably gonna be like early May before the ice comes off on a lot of these lakes in the northern regions of the Midwest. My home base, Lake Sakakawea included. And I would imagine a lot of people are wondering how is this going to affect walleye fishing? When will they spawn? Will there be a pre-spawn bite? Will the post-spawn bite start later than normal? Where will I find them? How will I catch them? Okay. Take a chill for a second, me included. Let's focus on the spawn first. Oh, and by the way, I am going to announce the winner of the Crappie Tea Challenge Free Fishing Day, which is going to come up later in this fall at the end of this video. So stick around for that. But anyway, if you read the research on wildlife spawning, a lot of it has to do with water temperature. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it's more of a correlation thing or a causation thing, but they say that typically between 42 to 48 degrees is when the walleyes like to lay their eggs. But I also think a big part of that is the photo period, which is just a fancy word for a day of the calendar. <laughs> How long is the sun up during the day? And it does seem like the photo period plays a pretty big role on Lake Sakakawea, for example. So walleyes may go a little earlier or a little later, depending on if the water's warmer or cooler than average, but typically they stay pretty close to that same first week of May kind of time frame. I've also heard some reports from some guys at Devil's Lake the last time the ice was off super, super late, you know, pushing almost the second week of May, and they said the first day that they were able to fish in their boat, they were catching spawned out females already. So it is possible walleyes will spawn right under the ice. I even asked chat GPT that question too. Not likely, maybe not ideal for them, but it's possible. And if that is the case, if they do spawn under the ice, well then there is no pre-spawn bite. Beep. Unless you're ice fishing. All of ice fishing is a pre-spawn bite in theory. Then again, the post-spawn bite is pre-spawn fishing for the following season, but I'm getting way off track here. <laughs> Let's bring it back. And also, if there's one thing that I try to get across really clearly on this channel, it's the fact that we can make a lot of educated guesses and predictions, but fish are weird, independent creatures that can do whatever they want. And there might be a lot of other variables going on beyond water temperature, beyond photo period, beyond ice conditions. So. They may totally surprise us and we'll have no idea what's actually going to happen. With that said, I do have a few thoughts and ideas on what I think is likely to happen this year on Sakakawea and some of the other lakes where the ice comes off late. Basically, I think all you can really do is get out there the first day the ice is off, if you have the ability to, and start looking around for fish. Try to see if you can determine, did the spawn happen or not, or how close are we? Obviously, if you're catching fish that look like they have a really big bloated guts, they're still full of eggs, they have not spawned yet. You're gonna be looking for gravel, sandy kind of flats, typically in bays, near creek arms, and stuff like that. You know, warmer, shallower water, maybe somewhat close to deep water, but typically shallow, sandy, gravelly, flat kind of areas, with a little bit of current if possible. If it's a closed lake that doesn't have any inflows, just a shoreline that's windswept is what you're going for, wherever the prevailing winds are. And basically you'll know if the spawn has already started from three factors. One, if you catch a really long, skinny female, just a little roughed up on the belly, been laying eggs on some sand and gravel, you know that fish has already spawned. And also fish do stagger sometimes, they're not all going at exactly the same time. A lot of times on some of these lakes they do go pretty close together though. And of course if the males are milking, if you catch a male walleye and there's a lot of, you know, stuff dripping around in your boat, that's a post-spawn situation. Or if the fishing just really sucks and you can't catch any walleyes, that's a pretty good indicator that the spawn is happening right now as well. So as for the pre-spawn bite, remains to be seen. We're just gonna have to get out there and see what happens. For the post-spawn bite, that typically doesn't heat up until water temps start to warm a little bit, kind of in that 50 to 55 degree range. And then when it gets to like 60 degrees, things get really, really good. So the question this year will be, if that water is still pretty cold, if we don't get a massive warm up soon after ice out, is it gonna delay the post spawn bite? And I would say probably not. I think the fish are going to want to eat to recuperate from all that stuff that they just did to try to procreate their species. The key will just be, how do you fish for them? If the water is still pretty cold, maybe the bite kind of starts in that mid 40 degree range, but the fish are gonna be more lethargic and they're gonna have a slower metabolism. So you might have to fish for them differently. You might have to be more finessey. You might have to be slower with your presentation. Lighter jigs, lighter mono leaders on your jigs 
moving things very, very slow, small little twitches, kind of like you would maybe fish in a post frontal situation when fish are a little off. So while all of this is certainly gonna have an impact, the fish are still gonna do what they're gonna do. They're gonna try to lay eggs, although sometimes they do reabsorb eggs and cancel their spawn, so to speak, and it doesn't happen. At some point, they are going to need to eat and they're gonna wanna try to eat, but the cooler the water is, the more sluggish they're gonna be and the harder they may be to catch unless you adapt to it. Or we just get a massive warm up after this happens and it kind of blows everything out of the water and fishing's crazy and nuts and everything's normal. What is normal anymore though, really? So anyway, it's fun to speculate on these things, but ultimately the fish are gonna tell us the answer once we get out there. But you gotta have something to talk about until that point, right? And right now we still have ice on the lake, so that's why I'm making this video. But one thing that you will know for sure in a few seconds here is who is the winner of the Crappie Tea versus Blumenthal Fishing rematch, challenge, walleye, smackdown, mono, imano. Oh, I should also mention this video idea was brought to you by Crappie Tea himself. He thought it'd be a good idea if I made one more before I'm on the water type of video. And I gotta hand it to him, he was right. This is a good video. It's much better than his other two ideas. I got worms. Thanks, Crap. Anyway, it's Wyatt Hands. So if you're watching Wyatt, you're gonna get a chance to fish with me. I don't know if it's gonna be on my dollar or Crappie T's dollar. Depends on who wins the competition. Probably gonna be me, which is gonna be in October, more than likely. So when that video comes out, You'll be able to watch the challenge between me and Crappie Tea. Doesn't really matter. Either way, you're going to go fishing, but it's going to be sometime after October this year if you can make it, or the following season, because I have to know financially how we're pulling this off. Anyway, thanks for watching. Can't wait to get the season started. Hopefully, you catch some pre and post spawn walleyes on Sakakawea or some other lake of your choice. If you got some value out of this, I'd appreciate it. If you hit the like button, think about subscribing to the channel. Maybe subscribe to Patreon where you can get some more in-depth fishing reports, a lot of content like this, but more often, more in-depth. And we did add a new tier this year for a one-on-one -on -one consultation sort of thing. If you want some more one-on-one -on -one time beyond the fishing reports, to go over whatever you wanna go over, rigging your boat, presentations, finding fish, breaking down a map, a contour map of your favorite lake, whatever it is, you can maybe become a patron on the Patreon website. Here's the link for that. Think about that and um, see you later, Fisher people. <laughs>